just been to see a two-dimensional life of her which is a show by an Australian artist called Fleur Noble it was a really interesting show uh, if well I, again I call it a show but uh, like so many of the things in the festival I'm having a difficulty kind of um, describing it or putting it into one kind of genre uh, two-dimensional life of her is effectively the projection show to end all projection shows. If you like your projections, if you like stuff being projected, uh, this is the show for you because there's a lot of that and I guess it plays with uh, making something look flat or making something look uh, 3D when it's actually flat and there's sort of different levels of project of uh, things that they project on. I, I'm left with a few questions, for example, if I was to talk to Fleur Noble, uh, you know, I might want to ask, you know, Perhaps a slightly uh, devil's advocate question. I mean, why is the show a a projection? Rather, a proje why is the show actual live as such, rather than just being a short film? Because a lot of it is filmed. I went to an art school in New York where we were drawing and painting from like life models and big setups for twelve hours a day or ten to twelve hours a day, and that was, I guess, doing that for a year was sort of I kind of exhausted it or exhausted my you know, patience. <laughs> I guess I pushed it so far that I was, I, even though I loved drawing so much, I was ready to move on. And I found rectangles really frustrating and, you know, flat surfaces. Um, I just wanted, I just wanted to get away from those two things because that's kind of, that is the restrictions of what you're operating in, like when you're drawing most of the time. So it, yeah, my love for it and then also my frustrations with it is what kind of led me to start creating this work and it's kind of about it's about two-dimensional surfaces and all the all the things that they can allude to to being and operating as so you know it's like two-dimensional surfaces in paintings and you know drawings throughout history it's like they they are often windows into spaces or they're they operate as a flat area or kind of almost as a mask for um for pretending that there's somebody, you know, on that surface. There's just so many different roles that they can play. Mm. I was interested in the idea of live performance. Originally, when I started making this, I thought there probably would be more live performance in it, but then I kind of ended up just feeling like there wasn't any need to put more in, and in, in a sense, it was, it made more sense to me not just to randomly throw a live performer in there. Pretty much every audience, like whether it's 103 year olds or 100 grown ups, you pretty much always get, maybe not three year olds might be a bit different, but like five, like five to 10 year olds, you know, or five to teenagers, whatever. You get a split audience often of just half of them will just get immersed in it and just become like just, they just kind of get lost in it and really enjoy it. And you get a lot that will sit outside of it and feel a bit challenged by not understanding it or not understanding the story or you know like uncom yeah un and and or they'll you know or they'll just be technically driven within it you know there's so many different ways that people will experience it that yeah and a lot of some people get really angry as well when they because they go to if when it's in theater festivals they often go expecting theater and then it really challenges what theatre is and that's why I think a lot of the festivals in Europe and stuff have programmed it is to create conversations around that. Right.